Guys, for me, one of them, the way this line is moving, might end up being the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are in San Francisco. Obviously, we know it's Brock Purdy, Steven, and not uh, James Garoppolo. Three and a half in a lot of spots. There are some juice threes now starting to pop. The move has been all toward Tampa. Um, I don't get it, honestly, um, unless okay. this is entirely about Tampa's defense because Tampa's offense is abysmal. I don't care what they did against the Saints. I don't care what they did against the Rams. This offense is horrible. Uh, that being said, we don't know what we'll get out of San Francisco after last week, but we know there is a hell of a lot more talent on the San Francisco offense than there is on the Tampa side. Uh, if those threes are there on San Francisco, I will probably end up on San Francisco low total game here. What do you think about your 49ers against Tampa? Yeah, they are my 49ers, but I think we're going heads up on this one this week, man. I, I bet Bucks plus three and a half here, and I was very curious to dig into some numbers on the narrative that we've heard this week about insert quarterback here into Kyle Shanahan offense and everything will be fine. I don't subscribe to that. If you look at expected completion percentage, it, it does bear out since 2017 when Kyle got there. Jimmy G, C.J. Beathard, and Nick Mullins, all three quarterbacks that he's had play for him, have all had seasons with a top 10 expected completion percentage, including a year where C.J. Beathard was number one in expected completion percentage. But here's the thing. That stat shows zero about actual quarterback performance, and it measures how often a quarterback should complete a pass based on depth of target and receiver separation. So... The real question is not that. The real question is how have non-Jimmy G quarterbacks actually performed in this offense? And among quarterbacks with at least 600 pass attempts since Kyle Shanahan got there, Nick Mullins was 28th in EPA, 23rd in success rate. C.J. Beathard was 46th in EPA, 38th in success rate. Meanwhile, Jimmy Garoppolo was third and fifth in those statistics. And if you look at the records, the 49ers are 42 and 19 in games Jimmy G plays and 9 and 29 in the Kyle Shanahan era when Jimmy G's not on the field. That is an enormous difference. Now, I don't disagree with you that the Bucs offense has showed us nothing. And Byron Leftwich comes out and has a, a bravado quote again saying, who cares about the stats and what we're doing? We're winning games. You're down 16-3 with five minutes left in the game, and you're still say, spouting this nonsense. Like, you need to change something. So the 49ers defense, I concede, can fully wreck this game. But what I do have confidence in is Tom Brady's ability to get rid of the ball. They rank number one in the league in adjusted sack rate and pressure allowed because Tom knows the offensive line is not as good as it's been in past years, and he gets rid of the ball very quickly. So asking Brock Purdy, based on what we know with these splits in the Kyle Shanahan offense, is it possible Brock Pur Purdy is a solid quarterback? It, sure, it's in the range of outcomes somewhere, but this is still a seventh-round rookie quarterback in an offense where we've seen backup quarterbacks still struggle no matter how much talent he has around him. So I'm getting three and a half with a knowledgeable quarterback who knows how to avoid pressure in a game with a total of 37. That on its face just has to be value, I would think. And and to your point, I don't think we're necessarily heads up because I'm not playing it at three and a half, right? I, Fair. I, I like it at three. I don't like it at three and a half. Uh, Brad Tampa, he, you know, Tom Brady can get rid of the ball, correct? But San Francisco's defense is a completely different animal and they're playing like it right now. Yeah. They said, uh, they said Tua could get rid of the ball last week as well. And, uh, mm. that, you know, fair point, terribly fair point. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously the question is Nick Bosa. So he, he's missed two consecutive practices. They're talking about hamstring irritation. Um, so yeah, I mean, if he plays and he's going up against the backup right tackle, Josh Wells, then I think he's getting another three sacks and Tom Brady's getting his face caved in. Um, but whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that is a national treasure of a face. It cannot be caved in. Yeah. 
That's a like a five million dollar plastic surgery face. That is. And he's <laughs> gradually getting more and more gaunt. It's a very strange look he's going that for. That is true. Now. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, Nick Bosa could wreck this game if he plays this in it. Um, I think. Uh, I think Tampa's a crap football team. I think they're really bad, and like they keep getting away with it because Brady's got that magic, but. The, the, the difference in talent if this is minus three and Bosa plays then I think San Francisco has to be the side 